This is a very common um, solenoid pump used in cheap snow machines and smoke machines and it's very prone to blocking up. It's often found wedged into a, a tank like this and you don't need to take it out of the tank or, or disconnect anything electrically to actually open this, although in this case I've removed it to make it easier to, to demonstrate. So to start, um, to get the pipe out the end, you loosen this off and inside here the pipe is just pushed through a little stuffing gland, a little grommet. So you can just, uh, if you want to remove the pipe completely, you can just pull it out like this and likewise for putting it back in just uh, shove it back through this grommet like this pop it into the end and when you tighten it down that will then clamp the pipe in but we don't want it in at the moment so let's take it out and get that out of the way the pump itself comes to bits with a bit of force because it, usually it's stuck uh, these things really stick up quite badly uh, you have to use a bit of force to actually unscrew this and be aware that when you unscrew this lots of uh, springy things may pop out um, so just be aware of that uh, and if you've got a different pump take extreme caution to note which bits came from where so let's uh, take all the bits out in the end of this is a little uh, spring-loaded plunger a little valve in this bit is assembly like this and there's a spring. Now this is a solenoid itself and when the solenoid is running this metal plunger goes backwards and forwards and that's what provides the pumping action and it's of course pushing against the spring as it does so. Um, the plunger itself is quite interesting oops, spring's trying to escape. The plunger itself is quite interesting because if I pull it out of this it's actually got a little spring inside it and a little valve and I'll, I'll show you um, I'll, I'll take the, th the rest of this thing to bits and uh, just show you how it all comes to bits. This is a um, this is a seal that um, this is a little chamber um, that the cylinder pumps in. So this is a seal for this side that seals against the outlet. Um, this washer keeps this inner seal in place. Let's hike that out. Be careful you don't damage this inner seal, it's, it's a little o-ring, it's uh, needed to make sure the piston makes a good uh, airtight and watertight seal. Um, and after that, the only other thing in here is <coughs> this other little um, o-ring, which has the only function of reducing noise and vibration, um, because otherwise um, the plungers that went backwards and forwards would be slamming against this washer here so um, that, that reduces the noise. Now to show you how it all operates I've, I'll just shove all that out of the way something you shouldn't really do when you're taking things to bits um, to show you how it operates the outlet valve which is this bit here sits into the end of the cylinder like that. It just sits against the end and when the liquid's being pushed against it will push that valve back but when the plunger's going the opposite direction it pulls the valve in and it stops anything going back in the opposite direction. This um, plunger in here moves backwards and forwards in, in this, the cylinder itself. Now when it's moving back the way this the outlet plunger blocks the outlet of the cylinder and as this pulls back, this little inside valve, which is very, very fishy, I really don't recommend mo removing this. There's a spring that goes right through to the inside, uh, to the back, and honestly, it, it's so hard to get that hooked back on in here. So uh, I recommend against taking that out. Certainly pull it out a wee bit and clean it, but uh, don't actually remove it completely. But as this is going back, that little valve pulls open, uh, and the liquid flows into the actual cylinder itself. And then when it's pushing back in again, the pressure pushes that valve closed, but it pushes this little valve open, and then the liquid can get pushed out in the opposite direction. And that's the, So the liquid's coming from this direction, and it's going out the way towards either the head of the snow machine or the smoke machine heater coil. So that's the operation of this. You can, uh, I'll just leave that there for a few seconds, just so you can freeze frame if you want and just uh, note, note this. But... Um, the assembly of it 
is like this. And this is a useful uh, picture because um, I'd recommend if you've disassembled it and you've lost track of everything, just do a screenshot of this and it will show you the order these things go back in again. Here's the inside view of the plunger. There's a plunger there. I'll just remove its wheel ring again. And there's the, the spring inside with the little cap and the spring is just flared at the end and poked through the other end. So it's not got anything really complex to hold it in place. It's just fed in from this end and it's very footry, so I'm, not, I'm going to give up because I can't really pick it out. But there you go, the, the cylinder, it's very simple. Um, so you've got the solenoid, you've got the spring, that, uh, the return spring for the plunger. The plunger itself, well I'll just put the things on it. Um, no I won't because that spring's rolling everywhere. Um, you've got the noise suppression washer, which is that one. You've got the metal um, retaining washer, which is this. You've got the seal, which goes into the end of the cylinder. And you've got the seal for sealing against the, this bit in here. And of course the little plunger, and that actually sits right into this bit. So, those are the bits, and I shall now assemble it again. And this is how you reassemble it. Make sure I get all the bits off here. When you open it, you'll find it's all gunked up inside. They are very prone to gunking up. Um, the, in the case of smoke machines, sometimes if impure liquids have been used, um, it can actually jam the heater coil and you can't really do much about that. It can block the heater coil and sometimes uh, the pump may actually be working fine, but it, it's not going to be able to actually push liquid in to the heater coil. So here's a solenoid. The spring goes into the solenoid like that. The coil and I'm just trying to remember how everything goes because I did this in reverse before. The seal goes into the end of the little cylinder like that. The plunger has the shock absorber put on first. Then the washer that retains the seal in. And then that goes into the cylinder. On the other side, this thread's on, it's the seal that seals against the outlet. And to complete it, this is dropped in here with the spring going in first. Quite footry. This gets pushed in, making sure the seal's in place. And that's just ready to go into the solenoid again against that spring. So you can take those components out, give them a good wash and clean, you'll often find they're all gunked up. Um, screw this back in, just firmly tight, and that's it. Um, that's it reassembled, and it's ready for you to put the pipe back on again. So, fairly straightforward, quite easy to maintain, but also quite easy to lose all the bits inside. And also make sure you don't nick or damage any of the rubber components, because they are quite important for sealing. And that's... It.